Today we will be walking through how to install and set up an FPV VTX system to our freestyle build. I will be explaining what does each pad does and why are we using certain pads to connect the VTX. I will also be walking you through how to set up your VTX table and enable certain ports to make your VTX work in Betaflight. This is an all-in-one video, so bring a cup of coffee as it will take a while. Let's go! Before we begin the installation, let's look at the parts we will be using. So first, we will be using the Runkin Phoenix SC Micro Size SR FPV camera. And for the VTX, we will be using the Rush Tanks Rush Tank Solo 1.6 watt, very powerful VTX. And as for the antenna, we'll be using the SMA Luminar AX2 RHCB antenna. And additional accessory required are you probably want to have a MMCX to SMA adapter and additional antenna holder that you are going to have to print it yourself because the original one that came with the Flyfish, uh, it's more for like a digital build and it just, it just doesn't fit most of the antenna well so you probably have to print this and I will just leave the file as below so you can find a 3D printer to print it. These together are often referred to as a VTX system. As for how to connect it, the most common connection method for our VTX will be to connect the camera and the VTX separately onto the flight controller. So what we have to remember is the camera receives signal and then send the signal into the flight controller and the flight controller is going to process it, add on OSD information and then export it out to the VTX and then the VTX will be able to broadcast that signal to our goggles. So in and out. Next, we will be looking at the wiring diagram for the camera and the VTX so we know which pads we need to solder. Okay, let's pull out a wire diagram for the Runkin Phoenix. In general, you will be required to solder at least three wires to the flight controller. So the first one is going to be, of course, your 5 volts, and the second one is going to be a ground, and the third one is a data cable, which you are going to transfer the camera footage into the flight controller. So. Let's look at which pads we should be soldering onto the flight controller. This, for this particular flight controller, you can see that this is a perfect location. It's actually the only location. So you can see we have a ground, we have a 5 volts, and we have a VDO in, so IS in. Okay, so let's solder this up. All right, so I'm not going to go in depth of how to solder because we already covered that in the previous videos. So all you have to do is check it out. I'm just going to speed up to save you some time. Okay, we are done. Next, let's look at the VTX. This is going to be a little bit more trickier as this particular VTX requires minimum 7 volts to power it on. This means your 5 volt pad is not going to work. The best soldering location on the flight controller will be finding a 7 to 9 volt pad if you can find one. But if you don't have a 7 or 9 volt pad, you can certainly power this directly from your main power source. So main power source is basically wherever you get your battery, so it's right here. What you have to do is to make sure to check your voltage acceptance range from your manual to ensure that you will not overload it, so which means you're not going to blow it. For example, this VTX has a power range from 7 to 36 volts, which means this can accept a power range from 2S to AS LiPo battery to power it. Why? Because if you remember, in the perfect world, each LiPo cell is maxed out at 4.25 volts and how many S means how many cells they are combined. So when it's a 2S, your max total voltage will be double at 8.5 volts, which you can power up this with a 2S. And when it's a 4S, you multiply the 4.25 volts by 4, which you get 17 volts. And 8S is 34 volts. So up to 8S, you are willy covered and you're not going to blow this one. Okay, so back to the subject. This flight controller does not have a 7 to 9 volt pad. So we will be connecting to this pad called the BAT Plus. So it's right here. It's called BAT Plus which the voltage will be same as the main end. It is just directed from here to here. If you just wanted to be sure that how many volts this, pad, this battery plus pad supplies, all you have to do is to pull out a multimeter 
and you're gonna turn it to the 200 over here. So basically right now, the multimeter will be testing the voltage and we're gonna power up with the 6S LiPo. So 6S. We're gonna first test the main source of power to see how much we are getting. So let me put it here so you can see it. So you can see that we're getting about 23, 23 volts. And let's go to the battery pad. So the bat pad, let me make it bigger. The bat pad right here. So BAT and ground. So you can see it's about the same. Okay, so based on this experiment, we can know that the BAT plus pad has the same voltage of the main. And our VTX will be well within the range. Okay, so we have talked about the power cable and now we're gonna talk about the ground. So ground is simple, ground goes to ground. And the third wire we're going to use is called, this is called the data cable, which can offer be referred to as the smart audio. So smart audio basically gives you control to your VTX in your goggle OSD. You will either connect this to a TX pad or sometimes it will even mark it as SA. So last one is gonna be your video wire. Remember we're getting video in, right? So we need the video to come out. So this will go to the pad called video out. Let's look at the flight controller. So battery pad right here. This is BAT ground, and we're not gonna use the fight volt. So VO means video out. T1 is going to be your smart audio, which is the data cable. All right, let's begin to solder this up. By the way, I forgot to mention, we are not going to use the 5 volt out in the ground, these two, because we're not powering the camera with the VTX. So you can either cut this off or tug it away. I'm just gonna cut it up later. Okay, so let's get the power. Mix is our smart audio, which is going to go to the T1 right here. Okay. Last one is our video out. Just right here. Okay. Okay, so I just discovered I made a small mistake. So what this one is called TX1 and it's already called UR1 and UR1 we are we are already using it for our EOLRS receiver so we will have to solder this smart audio cable to the TX T2 instead so we can use the second serial port so later on I might just swap them around but for now let's just solder it back to T2 so we can set it up in beta flight We are done. Once we're done with the soldering, we can start plugging in the antenna to the VTX and we can try to connect it to Betaflight to see if it works. Okay, we are done. Okay, actually, that's this. Okay, we are done. Okay. Let's bring this to computer and we can set up in Betaflight. Okay, so we're just going to connect to Betaflight and we're going to go to the ports tab. So at the ports tab, the reason why we are unable to use UR1 is because this is UR1 is TX1, right? So TX1, we are, it's already occupied by our EOLRS receiver. 
and I tried to see if I can probably use two stuff at once, but apparently no, you cannot use the Serial RX and also the Smart Audio here. So we have to solder Smart Audio to TX2, which is also UR2. So TX2, UR2. And we are going to come here and we're gonna enable Smart Audio. If you have IRC Tramp, then you should enable IRC Tramp. But we're this one, we have Smart Audio, so we're just gonna enable Smart Audio. And we're gonna hit Save and Reboot. Okay, so we're, once we connect it, we are going to go to the video transmitter. So I already preloaded the VTX table, so that's why you're seeing all these. But, but when you're opening this, it should be nothing and it should be your VTX is not set up. Don't worry, we're going to go to the CLI file and we are going to open the VTX table and you're going to copy this and you are going to paste it here. We're just going to hit enter. This should set up your VTX table properly. Once we reopen Betaflight and go to the video transmitter tab, your VTX should be set up properly. And at this place, you will be able to decide which band you want it to be on which channel. I like to just keep it on race band one. And you can decide you want it to go from 25, 400, 800, and 1.6 watts. So let's just put it on 400. And we are gonna hit save. Okay, so if you're paying attention, you're going to see that the device is saying that it's not ready. The reason behind is you have to power this using your battery. So we are just going to power up our quad with a battery. Okay, so once you're powering up your quad with your battery, make sure you keep enough airflow. So blow it with the fence or the VTS is going to overheat. And you see, right now the device is showing yes, device ready. So we should be able to test this out in our goggles. Okay, we are seeing some footage. Okay, let me see if I can adjust it. Okay. Okay. I know this is a terrible example, but I don't have a better VTX monitor at the moment. So this is the best I can do. Okay, but we're getting footage and this is a good thing. Okay, so this is a setup successful. All right, so the last step, we are just going to put everything back together, which is kind of hard. Let's see. Okay, so we are done. Let's go test fly this thing. The footage you are seeing is recorded by my DJI V2 Analog DVR. And this is my first time using a Rush VTX and wow, I am really surprised with how clean the signal is coming into the goggles. Definitely much, much better compared to other VTX I have used before. I guess you really just pay for what you get for. So if you are still in the market for a analog VTX, then I would say maybe consider getting one of this. Also, this is the first flight of the entire build and my first time flying a 6S drone. As I mostly fly smaller 1, 2, 3S whoop or quads, getting onto 6S really just, it is really mind blowing. You just have so much additional power and maybe probably that's the main reason why you will see me overshooting myself in the video later on. In addition, all the pit tuning and rates are still factory default. You can probably tell from the footage that this definitely requires some further tuning as it kind of flies like crap right now. Anyway, if I can figure out how tuning works later on, I will definitely share with you guys. So please help me subscribe to stay tuned and I will see you next time. Bye for now.